So this is the last of three major lectures for today. Because we have so much to do using this subject, we have little time for preliminaries. My notes for this talk is drawn from a course that I teach at Hunter College called African and Afro-American Resistance Movements, the 19th Century. I will begin by describing resistance movements in Africa, in the Caribbean, then in the United States, and what set these resistance movements in motion. I used to be a Baptist Sunday school teacher, and I come out of the tradition of the Baptist Church. Therefore, I will tell you what I'm going to say. I will say it, then I'll repeat it with the hope that the church will say amen. <laughs> I'm going to show that you have never taken oppression, slavery, as a natural thing in your life, and that you revolted on the shores of Africa to keep from getting on the boat, and that you revolted on the boat, you revolted to keep from getting off the boat, and when they forced you off of the boat, you continued the revolt on the land. And that we are the most revolutionary of the ethnic groups that make up the United States, and that the revolts in the Caribbean islands and South America were more successful for a cultural reason that needs to be taken into consideration. A cultural reason, not because anybody was any braver than anybody else, but because there was a cultural continuity maintained in those islands that could not be maintained in the United States. Now, this horrible trade in human flesh started in the 15th and in the 16th century. It took 100 years to get it underway. But after it gotten, it gotten underway, 